sure you suck out the rubbish or you clean it or you blow it out, then you prick and pour. And you prick, don't prick the pollen pots. Prick the honey pots so that there is less mixture. Now, there is one more method which the Australians do, okay, because their honey pots are the same size as yours. Same for the carbonaria and for your biroy, it's the same, okay. They use frames. Yeah, those are uh, very hard frames to clean. Frames. And it's, it will be very expensive. They use that printer to do it. So, so, right? To get the best of both worlds, your honey will be premium. You can price it premium price. Okay? Because it's expensive. And difficult to produce, right? Then you can have the B grade, the, the, the cheaper grade. You know what I mean? So here you are expanding your market, right? You cannot give excuses to yourself. Oh, it's, that would be expensive. Oh, that would be difficult. Of course, it would be difficult. If it's easy, then it would be cheap. Then you just go and buy a piece honey. Don't keep stingless bees. It's expensive. Stingless bee honey is more expensive, right? Why do you buy stingless bee honey? It's more expensive. Why can't you buy a cheaper mellifera honey? It's cheaper, what? Why do you want stingless bees? Why? Why do you want stingless bees? It's more expensive. Because therapeutic. Because you want to earn more. You sell at a higher price, you earn more. Right. No, actually, um, there are studies that it is really more therapeutic than honey. Dorsata honey. Yeah, but they migrate. What do you have? Nothing. Apis nothing. But stingless bees, every day you have stingless bees honey. So, in everything, okay, there's always a solution. Alright? And you have a choice. Which one you want? What's the market you want to uh, capture? Right? Now, everybody else can only capture a certain market. Okay. Now, if you can afford with a proper press or with the proper suction, okay, or with the proper frames, you have your own market. You don't have to sell everything the same. You know, if you sell single, he's selling stingless bee honey. She's selling stingless bee honey. Oh, but my stingless bee honey is for frames. These are very clean. There is no pollen involved. You can explain why. Okay? There is no... Uh, you can look at the clearness. It's not murky. Oh, it's so expensive. Okay, we have this one. This is great B. It's cheaper. That's, that's how you tackle the market. Don't let the market, you know, kill you and you give excuses to yourself. Capture the market. It's yours for the taking. You know? So you find ways and means to overcome whatever. In everything, there's always a solution. Yeah? It's a pump that sucks, a vacuum pump. It's a vacuum suction pump. Okay? Of course, you can use the syringe. You go like there for one hive oh, until no. your arms. It doesn't work. It's very difficult. It's difficult. So you use a suction with mm -hmm. such a pump. Less bee mortality. Yeah, less bee mortality. That's what you want. Because when you squeeze, you're squeezing with the bees sometimes. When you prick and pour, you pour so sometimes with the bees you still get poured out. So, what I'm trying to say is, it's best to try all the different methods. Then you have grade A, grade B, grade C. Which one do you want? Huh? You want really good quality? Grade A. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, so I, I'm just a little bit contradicted by what, like class A. So, what you're saying is, after a while, you see the muck go up here, right? And then you have the clear honey at the bottom so that's what you consider the clear good um, yeah yeah but because then again 
is that only for appearance sake because we know that the medicine is really at where the muck is is that correct to say how many percent i don't know take another bottle do you get the same percentage no it's inconsistent yeah so you so so you take the clear honey yeah take it out the clear honey mm -hmm. and you have the murky honey mm -hmm. all right you want 10 percent put 10 percent then all your bottles are 10 percent yes you want 20 percent put 20 percent okay. all the bottles 20 like this you don't even know how many percent you yeah. can't even assure me how many no. percent yeah. what's the point that's right. Then another, another bottle is like 80%. Another bottle is like only 5%. How can you sell the same price? So, what I'm trying to advocate here is be consistent. Mm -hmm. Alright? And if you want to try different methods of harvesting, you sell it in different grades. Alright? This is grade A, grade B, grade C. You explain why it's grade A. Look at the clearness. We have to see. That means it goes through another process, mm -hmm. an extra process just to provide you that clearness. Nothing to do yet with pasteurization. Or nothing to do with that. Not yet. Only talking about harvesting. The process of collecting the honey. Yes, harvesting the most consistent honey. All right. Got it. Yes. Any other questions? Because we're going to end the theory session today. We're going to start preparing the propolis. If you don't have any questions, let's get out the greater, let's everybody grate. Okay? Because all our propolis, we need to grate, break them down into small pieces so that we can extract for tomorrow. We need to soak them overnight. Yeah? Uh, uh, my my uh, focus uh, in beekeeping, mostly in Quezon province, is more on uh, community-based uh, yes. farming. And you know, the farmers are, so they say, without discrimination, are in terms of their socioeconomic uh, stand, is uh, something like hand-to-mouth uh, activity when it comes to uh, the so-called uh, practices in agriculture and other related activities related to beekeeping and so on. So my concept uh, relative to farm maintenance or farm millipolary maintenance that I always uh, introduce beekeeping and its integration to local farming system. So you mentioned the uh, level 1 to 4 scenario of uh, foraging behavior, uh, foraging uh, levels of uh, bees. Yeah. Now, uh, how can we apply, uh, since I am always asking uh, them uh, the use of uh, two-fold yield plants. Primarily, they have coconut, yes. Level one can be one of the answer, but uh, they jump to, uh, to uh, level one and two only. Though they have shrubs, and uh, ground covers, but very limited. So what will you uh, address? Same in, uh, my, my concept is that uh, I introduced two-fold yield because while waiting to uh, bees uh, buy products, they have another uh, source of income for them to sustain their subsistence. So if this the, uh, the, the approach in beekeeping is not the commercial scenario, or rather uh, I'm talking to uh, the uh, farming system, if I'm going to integrate it to farming system, what will you suggest uh, to uh, cope up with the uh, farm maintenance? Yeah, uh, put it this way. Um, not everybody has big farms or beautiful farms like this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The idea of these levels is for you to go to any location, look at it, right? And you can decide, okay, if there are trees, the level one is covered. If you can see, as far as your eye can see, you can see green, it's level two is covered, right? Now, the lower ones, if you see flowers, if you see the ground zero, that means you are running short on level four. So what of level four have to fold use? You got kampong, you got groundnuts, 
Araki sa Kogia, you got Kamote. There's all two Kulinis. There's no. There's nothing. Doesn't mean. Oh, I don't get any yield from Makaya, so I'm not gonna plant. Fine, don't plant Makaya. Plant uh, Kamote. You got sweet potatoes. Every day we are eating sweet potatoes. So? Kangkong. Is it the same name? Kangkong? Yeah. yeah. Plant Kangkong. Convolusus. Yeah? Yeah, one for everyone. And, uh, okay, any more questions? If there are no more questions, we're we gonna go to, we're gonna do some rating. Please bring out your, bring out your propolis.